makeup friends and welcome back to the channel or if you're new here then hello and welcome. My name is Kara and in today's video I'm going to be doing rapid reviews of a bunch of different items. These are all things that I've picked up in the last month and a half, two months or so. Nothing that I have already done dedicated review videos on but things that you may have seen me use in my weekly what I wore to the office series although I neglected to post one over the Easter weekend. There's a multitude of reasons for that, but I will be getting back into them. So if you missed that one, don't worry, there's another one coming. Okay, very briefly before we get into this though, I did want to talk briefly about what's on my eyes, what's on my mouth, and in general what's going on with my face. So, eyes. I have the new Nomad Royal Europe palette. I just did very a very simple look. Got a little bit of this buffed into the transition, a little bit of the matte brown just to deepen things up and add a little bit of definition. And then I went in with this multi-chrome shade here called Imperial Crown, and that's what you see all over my lids. The liner and the mascara we are going to talk about, although obviously I have picked this one up. It just arrived yesterday, so I'm not going to be talking about this one in depth at all in this video. On my lips is a liquid lipstick from NARS. This is one of their Power Matte, what is this? Power Matte Lip Pigment in Light My Fire. And then, generally speaking, you might notice some differences. I have had Botox done. It's been about a year since I had my last treatment, and so he went in with a little bit extra because the ravages of one year, the toll it has taken on my face, I needed a few more units than usual. However, the problem that I'm having, I'm super happy with the forehead, the eyes, super, super happy with it. I also had a lip flip done, so if you're not familiar, they can put Botox, like he puts it in up around here, and it kind of gives like a sort of illusion of lip fillers without having to do any sort of fillers whatsoever. It just kind of like pulls things up a little bit, gives a little bit more fullness across the top of the lip. I'm usually very, very happy with the results, it has fucked my smile up. So I'm really looking forward to the Botox just sort of releasing its grasp a little bit because when I smile now, it just kind of like the lip flips under. And so even like trying to check my teeth to see if there's lipstick on it, I can't lift. See how it just like goes into a flat line? I can't lift <laughs> my lip up. And I'm quite self-conscious about it because I know my smile looks different and it certainly feels different. So. Uh, not quite sure, gonna have to talk to him about that when I go back for the next round in a few months time. But uh, yes, yeah, so if I'm looking different than when you saw me in my last video, that is why. All right, with all of that out of the way, let's get into talking about these items. I am going to try very hard to keep it as succinct as possible. So here we go. Let's start off with eyeshadow palettes because there are quite a few I want to talk about. And I haven't done swatches of these palettes for the purpose of this video simply because some of them are older. There are tons of swatch pictures, tons of reviews, tons of eye look videos and things of that nature already done with them. So why recreate the wheel if I'm being perfectly honest? So in specific, we've got two Natasha Denona palettes. If you are Canadian and you're interested in Natasha Denona, hop on over to the Sephora Canada website as quickly as you can. I very strongly suspect that Natasha is exiting Sephora Canada because all of the stuff is on sale. So this palette here I got for, I want to say $60. It's normally in the $80 range. And then the Retro Glam palette I got for $43. And again, it's normally, yes, 87 range. This one's 87, it was 30% off. This one was 50% off. So anyways, these both released in the fall. I was very interested in both of them at the time, but not interested enough to pull the trigger on an almost $90 palette. But they went on sale and I could not resist. So first up, let's talk about the My Dream palette. This is right up my alley. It is really just so very beautiful. Those really deep, purpley tones. There is a multi-chrome in here as well. I might, I think multi-chrome's kind of pushing it. Duochrome, solidly, multi. Mm, I'm questioning that one. But overall, this is the Natasha Denona formula that you've come to expect. 
There are a couple of those cream to matte shades in here, this one and here. Those are kind of hit and miss for me. Sometimes I find them very difficult to work with. They just don't blend very nicely. They become rather patchy. That is not the case with this one. I have not had any complaints with these shades whatsoever. This black is a truly matte black. Go in with a very light hand, but you can build it up to absolute opacity. But if you go in with that slight amount at first and then blend it out, you can achieve some really nice blown out smoky sort of looks. This can get very dramatic very quickly. And I do post my next what I wore to the office video. You will see this one in there and it was my first time applying it and I hadn't swatched it. So it went from zero to 60 very quickly. Regardless, beautiful, absolutely beautiful. The shimmers last all day. The mattes blend, no problem. The only thing I would say sort of a word of caution with this palette and with the Retro Glam, which I will show you in a moment, is that even these very light looking matte shades come across a lot deeper on the skin than they look in the pan. I can't explain that sorcery, but it did take me by surprise and that's how the look got out of control so quickly is because I went in with this shade here and it did apply much deeper than I thought it was going to. I thought it would just blend out into almost like a sheer wash of color and I was incorrect in that assumption. Likewise, some of the lighter matte shades in the Retro Glam palette. There is, she is on the inside. So this pink and then this, whatever color this is, I, beige? I don't know. Anyways, they do apply a little bit deeper than they look in the pan. It's not necessarily a bad thing, but what I would point out is that the difference between this shadow and this one once applied is fairly minimal. Same with this shadow and this one. So while they do look fairly diverse in the pan, not so much once applied. Having said that, it is a very pretty palette. If I had to give the edge to one of them, it's going to be the My Dream palette. Just because this one, I do feel a little bit limited by it, despite how many shadows are in here. Obviously, it's very much a themed color story going on here with those pinks and the greens. I do find those to be very complementary tones, pink and green. I love it. But it's more so the finishes in here that kind of throw me. So if this really deep forest green was a matte, I would be much happier with the palette overall. This is one of those like cream to powder kind of finishes, has more of like a satiny kind of finish. I would rather it just be a matte powder. Personal preference, but personal channel, I'll share my personal preference. So there we have that. But again, the shimmers, beautiful. And again, they last all day on the eyes. So no buyer's remorse on either of these palettes. Then, We've got three little guys here, and these are $5 each. These are from Hard Candy, part of their monochrome shadows. So I picked up Burn, and I've got, oh gosh, I've used it so much that I can't read it, Dope, this one here, and then the last one is Envy. The thing I'd point out about this one is that the lightest green shimmer did like completely fall out of the pan. I was able to repress it back in there, but it was a little bit sensitive, just so you're aware. However, these guys, $5, they're worth so much more than that. They really are. The mattes, again, blend out beautifully. Even these really deep shades here, there's no patchiness to them. I haven't used Hard Candy in ages. Like, it's been years since I've tried any of their shadows. And from what I re like can recall from using them in the past is that they've just kind of been meh. Like, they haven't been horrific to use, but they really haven't lasted, like left a lasting positive impression on me. These ones have. These shimmers in here as well, like, I know I said I didn't do swatches, but this one is like a hold on to your butts kind of shade because it is just so beautiful. And it looks every bit as fresh and metallic and gorgeous at the end of the day as it does at the beginning of the day. So for $5, you cannot go wrong. They have a lot more options to choose from as well, other than just these. There's like a pink toned one, a more like yellow and brown, like a sunflower kind of color story. There's a purple one. And I think there's another neutral one as well, but lots to choose from. Highly, highly, highly recommend these. 
Now there's also this little guy here who is also $5. This one is from e.l.f., part of their Good Vibes Only collection. This one is actually called Psychedelic Dreams. And she's pretty, I will say. I really like this color story, this like metallic olive. Oh, be still my heart, beautiful. The problem with this is that that shimmer does not last on the eyes. The mattes do, the mattes blend out. There's only two in here, like I don't have a complaint about them, but this is arguably to me the standout shade in this palette and I really wanted it to last all day, but by the end of the day, despite using a setting spray and despite having a primer on my eyelids, you could just see like a little tiny halo of it at the very center of my eye. Everything else had disappeared. So I was kind of disappointed, well, I was very disappointed by that. Thankfully, again, the palette's only $5, so I'm not out a ton of money, but I just wanted to caution you on that one. If you're looking for something super easy, a little four pan palette like this, you don't want to break the bank, look to hard candy. I would let the uh, e.l.f. one go. So that does it for eyeshadow palettes. So let's move on to blush. And I have this one up first from Culfi. This is the, oh, please forgive me if I've said this wrong, Mendai Moment Blush in Lucky Lotus. So this is like a purpley blush. I'm gonna do the overlay of the swatches on this. This is very, very pigmented. It can go from zero to 60 very quickly, but if you learn how to apply it, just go in with a very, very minimal amount. It's always easier to add more than it is to take away excess, and it is beautiful. And the thing that I really like about the fact of how pigmented it is, is that anybody can wear it. Even if you are very fair, you can go in with a very light hand, you can mix it in with a little bit of foundation and apply it that way just to tone it down. But if you have a deeper skin tone, you can really build up the pigmentation on this as well. So I like when you have products that can suit pretty much any skin tones need. The other thing I like about the blush is just how good the staying power is on it. I can still see the blush on my cheeks at the end of the day. I have two other blushes to talk about. Both of them are from Rare Beauty and both of them are limited edition shades. I had mentioned in my most recent new makeup release video that I did want to pick up both because I couldn't decide between them, so here we are. One is a little bit more rosy, one is a little bit more peach. I am wearing the rosier one on my cheeks today. So let's start there. That is in the shade Worth, and then the peachier one is in the shade Virtue. So again, with these blushes, a little goes a very long way. These little blush tubes would last basically a lifetime. You do get a ton of product on the doe foot as it comes out, so I always just scrape off the excess, and then I go in with one dot first on my cheek, and then blend that out, and then if I feel like I need a little bit more, I can add more from there. Again, these are blushes that last all day on the cheeks, and I really like the finish of them as well. They're not a matte blush, but they're not glittery. They just add a little bit of that like healthy, I'm hydrated kind of sheen to the skin, which I think is really great when foundations more and more so are leaning towards the glowy kind of finish now, or at least the sort of more natural looking finish and less so with the matte. I find if you have a matte foundation and you go in with a more glowy blush, it just has a bit of a disconnect to it, but this plays nicely with the trends that we're seeing emerge with base products at this point. I'm a big fan of both of these. Again, no buyer's remorse, even though they're not wildly different one from the next. There is a place for both of them. I think they're both very flattering, at least on my skin tone, and I'm very happy with my purchases. All right, so I've just mentioned base products, so let's talk about foundation. So I picked this one up here from the brand Basma. This is the only product that they have currently available on the Sephora Canada website. I hadn't heard about them before, so I don't know if they actually have other products in their lineup. So, uh, because I'm not familiar with their brand, I used the online Sephora shade matcher questionnaire thingy thing, and it recommended this shade, which is 31. Once it arrived, obviously I opened it up and became immediately concerned because it looks far too deep for my skin. Happily though, I can't explain why, but when I blend it out, it's a perfect match. The only minor complaint I have about it, and it is minor, 
is that blending it out does take effort. It takes a few go rounds before I start seeing the foundation moving from just that initial line. I do find that the brush that I use has an impact, so if it is a bit more densely packed of a brush, it does work a lot better. Whereas if I use a brush that I would normally use for say a powder foundation or for a lighter coverage application, it just struggles and it just takes that much longer to blend out. So I don't want to detract from the actual product itself because once it's applied to the skin, it has a very natural look to it. I wouldn't call it glowy, but I wouldn't call it mattifying. It really just looks like my skin, except it has this nice coverage to it. I would say that I can build it up to about a solid medium coverage. I haven't tried building it beyond that because I think it would start to get heavy, but even at medium, I can't really feel it on my skin. It feels more like a powder once it's applied. There's no tackiness to it. There's no heaviness to it. And I do find that it wears really well throughout the day. Just for a little bit of context, I do have normal skin, so I don't really have any oily spots or any super dryness. So if that helps, I just wanted to throw that information out there. Okay, so then before we move on to the myriad of lip products that I have, let's talk about eyeliners. So we'll talk about this one first because it's the one that I'm wearing today. This is the Dior, uh, Dior On Stage Liner. Now it doesn't have the shade name on it. It's like a navy blue. I think it's called Denim. I could be wrong. There is a number at the bottom, 296. The eyeliner itself, I would say it's like a six and a half out of 10. Once it's on, it lasts all day. I do like the precision of the applicator itself. I certainly like the color, but I do find that it feels like it's drying out almost instantly. So I do find that it gets stuck on itself. I have to recap it and shake it even just to get one wing done. And that's not my normal experience with like, say the Clinique Easy Liner or Pretty Liner or whatever the hell they're calling it now, the Pretty Easy Liner, whatever the hell they're calling it now. The Clinique one, never have a complaint about. My Tom Ford double-ended one, never had that complaint with it. This one needs to up its game, especially at the price point. Then we've got this guy here. So this is from Urban Decay. It's their new 24-7 Inks liner. I picked up the shade Freak. <sighs> I am a little bit torn on the packaging. I don't know why it's so damned long. Like, it's unnecessarily long. I do like this little triangle-y thing here though, because it does make it very easy to hold. You've got a lot of good precision in there. It's not gonna go like rolling around or anything of that sort. So I do like that. But if I'm doing like really precise precision work and stuff like that, like I don't need it this long. It could have been a normal length. Uh, like by contrast, like why? why? Why are you three inches longer? It doesn't make any sense. Again, I'm on the fence about this. It's called Freak. I remember the shade Freak from the electric palette, how bright, it's like an electric chartreuse kind of color. I thought that this would have a bit more oomph to it than it does. Having said that, it's pretty, it's a unique color. I don't feel like I want to return it. I like the application of it. It doesn't crack or fade, but even if it did, it stains so aggressively that you're good. So there's pros and cons there. Your liner's not budging anywhere all day. It is locked and loaded. It is not going anywhere. But when you go to wash it off, it's locked and loaded and it's not going anywhere. It will fade, but it just, it, it's too much. It's a little too much with the staining because I don't wanna scrub at my eyes in the way you see me scrub in the video on my arm. I'm not doing that to my eyes. It stains significantly. This is the only color I have. They do have darker options as well. I don't know if those darker ones stain as much as this. I probably wouldn't be upset with a black liner that stained like this because then it would just be day two liner. But when you have a color like this, if I wanna go in with something a little bit more neutral or light the next day, I have to take into consideration the fact that my lash line is green and work around that. So then, Let's talk about the mascara that like everybody was talking about, what, two months ago? The L'Oreal Telescopic Lift. Now, I have to say, I have not tried any of the other iterations of the telescopic mascara, so I have no point of comparison. 
I am just talking about this mascara as it stands on its own without trying to compare it to earlier versions of it. I really like this mascara. Like I really like this mascara. I normally am not a big fan of gimmicky sort of wands. Like they just kind of make my eye twitch and I just don't see the point of them. But this one, I don't have any complaints about it. I even the side that really doesn't have any bristles, like that's sort of like my finishing side. And I do find that it really does lift my lashes and add some really good length to them. It doesn't so much volumize them, but it doesn't claim to. So I'm, I'm appreciative of that. My thing is like, it works so well. Why are people lying about it? Like, I just, uh, anyways, I don't have time for that. I like it. I haven't had any issues with it smudging. I haven't had any issues with it flaking off. At the end of the day, if I rub my eyes, yes, it will start to crumble. I can wash it off fairly easily. I do have to go in with an actual like eye makeup remover. So just keep that in mind, but it's not nearly as bad as like a waterproof mascara where it's like cemented on your eyes and it's never coming off. So I really don't have any strong complaints about it. I really like this. Again, I don't know why people are lying about it. It performs well. It does what it says it's going to do. I can't ask for more. So then that's going to bring us to lip products and we do have quite a few. So first up we have the matte lipsticks from LYS. I believe they're called the Speak Love, but like the size of the font on this sticker is like 0.2 and there's absolutely no way in this world without a telescope that I'm ever reading it. I could look it up, but I'm not that dedicated. It's the only lipstick that they have that looks like this. This particular shade is called Sincere and it's like a pinky nude. I would buy more of these. I really like these. They are not drying. I like how precise they are for application. They do have a matte finish to them, but it's not that like dried out, show off every crease in your lips kind of matte. It's a lot more creamy, a lot more comfortable than what you would expect from a matte lipstick. I'm really liking these. I like the packaging as well, although it is going to get dirty. That's just sort of the reality. It's like a fake leather portion on here and then you've got like the rose gold on the back. I think it's really pretty though. I would definitely buy more. Okay, moving on from there. We're gonna talk lip oils from Rare Beauty. I have the shade Hope. And I have all the other shades currently sitting in my love list. I'm not going to buy all of the other shades, but I'm going to be very tempted to do so because I really like these. I love these. I'm big into like lip oils right now. So I'm kind of coming at it with a bit of a bias because I really like lip oils. But this one kind of stands above a lot of them and it's in the staining effect that it has. So you apply it and it does have that like oily kind of slip. I would say that lasts maybe half an hour and then you don't really feel anything on your lips, although they do feel nourished. It doesn't leave your lips feeling dried out. I can't remember which product I was talking about in a recent video where I apply it to my lips. Oh, it was the, um, the Juvia's Place lip balms, like the tinted lip balms. You apply that, it dries the hell out of your lips and then you have to apply more and it dries it even more. And it's like this self-perpetuating horrible cycle that is not the case here. This leaves your lips feeling cared for and nourished, but it also has a bit of a staining effect. And as you'll see when I'm trying to wash off all the swatches off my arm, it really stains. Like it's obviously this is like one of the lightest colors in the range, but it still stains. And I really like that because then I don't feel like I have to top it up every half hour. I can get away with every few hours and then top it up from there. So Love that for a lip oil because normally once they're gone, they're gone. Next, we have the Superstay Vinyl Ink from Maybelline, which I have in the shade Charged. I love the color of this. It is the perfect blend of purple and red and brown. It is like vamp. That's what it could be called is just vamp. It is beautiful. The problem is I don't love the formula. It reminds me very much of the Superstay Matte Inks in that it does last a very long time on the lips. However, there is gonna be stickiness and that stickiness doesn't ever really dissipate. 
This one does have, I find, a bit more of a transfer proof finish than what the matte inks did. Those ones, sometimes just the outside of the mouth would still show up, like if you did the kiss test. This one does not. So even though it has like a glossier finish, it's not messy, it's not bleeding around or anything like that. It's not smudging all over your face, but it is sticky. And then again, I do find with this, I think because it's so sticky that once it does start to wear away, it'll escape from the center, but then you're left with like this ring of color around your mouth, which is not a cute look. So this is one that I have to like have a mirror on hand or at least check like the camera on my phone just to make sure that my teeth and my mouth don't look completely jacked up. So it's a little bit of like a high risk, high reward situation though, because the color's freaking gorgeous. The color's beautiful. I'm just not super wild on the formula. Now, a formula that I really love though, these guys here from NYX. These are the new Smooth Whip Matte Lip Creams. They remind me very much of the Kaleidos Lip Clays. They both have a moussey texture. They both have excellent durability and Frankly, they both have shades very similar to this one here. So there's some options there if you don't want to place an online order, you prefer to just go into the drugstore and pick one up, I would check these ones out here from NYX. These, they're frankly just impressive, if I'm being honest. I wore this one here, B-Day Frosting, to work yesterday. I had coffee throughout the day, had a few snacks, sipped on water all day. I didn't have to touch this up until about 2.30 in the afternoon. And even at that, it was really just to even things out a little bit because it was starting to wear away from eating and drinking, but the longevity, impressive. As well, even though they are fully matte, they don't make it look like your anus is located in your face. Always a good thing to avoid. They don't give you that like dried out look to your lips. They don't show off every line and crease that you have going on. They wear away really nicely. There is a little bit of a staining effect to them. Not terrible so that you like can't wipe it off at the end of the day, but enough so so that when brighter colors like this are starting to wear, it's not nearly as obvious as it is with this one here. I'm just a big fan of these. I would purchase more shades of them if there were more shades that I didn't already have. I mean, I've already got three that I probably have exact dupes for in the lip clays. That's not to say that I won't buy any more shades because sometimes when a girl's standing in front of the lip product display in the middle of Shoppers Drug Mart, logic just exits the chat and there we go. So sometimes that happens. Anyways, with all of that said, those are the items that I have picked up over the last two months, call it. If you've tried any of these, please let us know your experience down below so that everybody can learn from each other. And if you've had a different experience, particularly like the foundation, if you have oily skin or dry skin, how did it work for you? All of that kind of stuff. Let me know. I'm always curious to hear from you in that regard. But other than that, I'm going to wrap the video up here. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch and I will see you in my next one. Until then, just be a decent human being. Bye for now.